It's a lady. She owes 119. It's a two bed, two bath house. She's asking 175. And she wants to retire and wants to go to Florida. Understandable. The one thing she said was, hey, I need 35000 to retire because I want to buy a house in Florida. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what, what's the best approach, you know, knowing that, you know, I think 175, 170 to 180 is fair for retail. Um, but how do I get it where I can get a terms deal, but actually get her some money up front? but also do where I can get some terms or is that just too much of a spread because I don't know if I can get that big of a down payment from somebody doing a terms deal. No, so you wouldn't. 119 and she needs 35? She was 119. Her mortgage is about 1130 a month. Yep. And that, like I said, she's asking one about 35. That gets you to like 154. Yeah. And it's worth 180 maybe fixed up. Well, 175, 180 right now. She got new floors put in. I've seen pictures. It looks does, decent. Does it need any additional work, Rob? Besides that, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. I just I just found it late yesterday afternoon. I'm going to go see it in a couple of days, mm -hmm. but I wanted to at least have some some background before I went and saw her in case I had something in my pocket. Here's what I would do: um, if if you look at the property and it's in great shape, it could actually sell for 175 to 180. I would try and negotiate uh, an. I'd put it under contract and try and retail sell it. Okay. Or I would try and put an option on it. And what do you mean an by option? an option? Well, an option is like a lease option without the lease. You, you're going to get the right to buy that property at a fixed price for a fixed period of time. And you could turn around. That gives you the legal right to turn around and sell it. So if she wants... You know, if, if she literally just needs the third, she'll take just the 35 over the 119. I mean, I, I think I may, maybe I could say, hey, how about 30? How about 25? I mean, I haven't broached that. That's what she yeah. asked for. Well, you that's know, your best to... deal. If you could get, you know, if you could get her a small amount of that 35 or 25 um, and then buy it subject to and, and have her wait on the balance, that's going to be your best deal. The, the next best would be to option it for, you know, 150, 154, something like that. Uh, and you okay. could do that all the way up to, you know, maybe 160. Uh, you could put an option under it. Okay. And that gives you the right to buy it at that price. And it also gives you the right to sell it. And so you turn around and try and sell it for 175, 180. And you do a, a simultaneous close and you pick up the difference between the, the 175 and the 160. Let's say you get it under option for would you ever try to say, hold on to it and do a traditional rent to own or just do a, a renter? Uh, you could, but you, that's going to be dependent on you getting the vast majority of it carried back by her. So in other words, she's going to have to buy subject. You're going to have to buy subject two with the seller carry back. And it sounds like okay. she actually needs, she literally needs some of that money she does. To, to move. So yeah. you can, you can, um, uh, monetize that for yourself you can monetize those set of circumstances for your own benefit by putting together something that gets her enough money to move but um you know allows you to take uh you know the rest of the profit between the difference between that value and the value that you're going to be able to sell for when you have these traditional where people just want to move i have a lot i've run into a bunch where people want to retire and move south and they all need their money some will save terms, but they need a little bit of money to get the next house. What do you do in those instances? Does it really only work when they're willing to really just wait on the down payment? Because I'm always in my head trying to figure out, yes, they want to move, but how can they move if they still owe money in their house and they don't get a down payment? They don't, a lot of these people don't have money to put down on the next house. So right. that becomes a problem. Yeah, not, not at, well, you try and do something like this that will get them the cash. Remember, they're not going to be able to get in, if you didn't come along, they still aren't going to have the cash to move until they sell their house. Right. So what you just try and do is you try and put together, a, a, make it easy for them. And you try and, uh, you know, it's like a kind of a wholesale deal. Right, uh, right. Type thing is what you're doing. Because I'm really just trying to sell that option, you, you still have no risk by doing an option. Yeah. You have the opportunity to make the upside. And so I, I would look at something like that for those types of transactions. What would be they, the term on the option? What kind of timeline on the option? You know, typically you get like 90 days, 120 days, okay. up to six months. 
Okay. Um, you know, and that gives you the opportunity. And then you got to aggressively go out and find an organic buyer, somebody who's got a bank loan or cash to pay full retail price. And that's yeah. how you make your money by being able to negotiate down to the cheapest all cash price and then turn around and find the highest paying all cash buyer, or in, in this case, either an all cash buyer or somebody who's got a loan in place. Okay. And you can make a good living doing that. Right. Okay. Uh, Thank Rob, you. To, to what I think was your, your question earlier, okay, if you're trying to buy on terms from a seller that needs a bunch of cash out to go buy their next house, a lot of times that just doesn't work because you, if you're going to buy on terms, you need to get your down payment at 3% or less as a general guideline. Yeah. Because if you lay out 3% and you only get 5% or 10% from your buyer, whatever that spread is, that's your front end payday. So obviously you want to maximize that. Yeah. So you don't want to promise somebody you're going to give them 10% down and you go get 7% down from your buyer. Doesn't make right. sense. The other way to, uh, for the seller to get their cash out that we were talking about this with one of the other guys, uh, Ishmael, I think, uh, is have the seller go refinance and pull some cash out and then you buy subject to and you just take over that existing debt. Now, if they got bad credit, then they're probably not going to be able to do that or maybe they don't want to do that or whatever. But those are the two ways to get them some cash.